when do I switch characters? When do I feel like it's the right time? Is there like a gut reaction? Anyway, um, we're going to be moving on to the other side of losers. This is going to be Mouse Rat versus Amaryllis. Bayonetta versus Pikachu. Now, whoa, give me your hot take on this because my, my reference of this matchup is I will call outdated. <laughs> so it's... It's a little bit weird, but keep into account to reference that perhaps out-of-dated information. Uh, Pikachu in, was one of the few characters that, at, in the late meta of Smash 4, was thought to go even with Bayonetta. Not win, but go even. Now you take away everything that was broken about Bayonetta in Smash 4. Not everything, but a lot of things about Bayonetta in Smash 4. And you've got a character that, and you've got a matchup that can have its struggles if you're, if you're the, the Umber Witch. Meanwhile, Pikachu has all the additional strengths that he got in this game, in addition to extra hurt box shifting that makes his pancaking that much better. So, it can be definitely tough for an inexperienced Bayo, but if Amaros is anything, he is not inexperienced. He can definitely pull a lot of stuff out and has an excellent flow in Bayonetta's combo game, the problem is finding your starters. Yeah, and as we said before in uh, Mouse Rat's previous set, he's a lot more of a defensive Pikachu, and that can be really hard if you're Bayonetta, because if the Pikachu wants to play defensive, that means that they're not going to be overextending, making silly mistakes that will let you get these, like, you know, huge 50-60% combos. Instead, you're really going to have to earn every single hit that you manage to actually accrue. And the benefit of being a bit more defensive and minimizing interactions like that is you know very astutely how to get out of sticky situations. And one of the best modes of counterplay to Bayonetta is SDI. While it's not as strong as before thanks to a recent update, it will definitely serve a factor as Mouse Rat only is at 100 after being hit by things like Afterburner Kick, which normally lead to pretty big combos, but that's a really solid kill confirm that Amaros needed right then and there before things got way out of hand. Being said, he's still down by quite a bit. 70% already tacked onto him. But one of the downsides to being a defensive Pikachu is that you might not be able to... And you might not be able to basically find yourself the opportunities for big kills like you would if you were more of a hyper-aggressive pressure kind of Pikachu. Meaning that 70% on Bayo might not actually be that much if Bayo is able to live to 150% consistently. We'll see whether or not uh, Emeraldus is able to tap into that survivability or not. But definitely, I think that that's going to be sort of the losing point for Mouse Rat is whether or not he's able to finish these stocks off when the time finally comes. And you're, you're totally correct as this, as the game started to really swing in the favor of Amaryllis as he caught a couple of techs on these battlefield platforms to make up so much damage. 105 now, and I, again, like, if you're gonna hang out on the platforms, Banetta can pressure you like, in infinite ways thanks to these ABKs. Oh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> the, the witch time in vulnerability making uh, making a gr grab whiff in his face. You know, actually, we've seen now at, at least twice by my counting that Mousetrat has been in the advantageous position of putting uh, Emeralus at the ledge, but then gets kind of caught by an errant ABK uh, while Emeralus was trying to return and actually worked out. Oh, for him. Oh. Dragon. Wow, I can't believe that nobody died throughout that entire exchange. He's 0 for 3 on witch times. He's landed them, but, only, but just can't kill him when he's in witch time, as that will result in the stock. I mean, 150, he gave him a lot of room to make this comeback, but okay. I was going to say, like, oh, man, Mouse Rat can play super defensive and run away now. No, he can't, because it's even, and he's losing this stock now, and he's a... Well, he never mind. He's in a back air now. Great use of those thunder jolts to intercept Bayonetta during her recovery, able to not only get some extra damage but also reset the witch in an even more uncomfortable position off stage. So, honestly, the ledge, the 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 edge guards themselves have been a huge source of damage for 
Mousetrap, even if they haven't led to any big stocks or anything. So if you are Amaryllis, you have to be nervous about getting thrown off stage. A lot of times Bayonetta is totally comfortable being off stage. Oh, okay, that time, which, first time he's effectively punished a witch time. And uh, got managed to get some decent damage out of it, but still a little bit behind here. Oh. And we have to still keep an eye on the clock. I mean, this match has... Well, I don't think it will end in time. It has been rather slow placed. Both players very aware of the punish game that both of their characters can offer and just how much how good they are at uh, at showing that off. As thanks, Shao Time for the follow. Are yeah. we gonna get and, anything on this platform? No. Yeah. Okay. And even if it doesn't necessarily go to time, time can absolutely be a factor in that. When the two players look at the clock and one of them goes, "Oh no, I need to approach now." Oh, yeah, we're he's... getting close to a minute left, and oh, <gasps> that was a huge. Huge bat within, not able to really capitalize though. And now we're at a oh! Wow, he and getting punished stuffed. all around. He stuffed out his dash attack attempt with that down tilt. Man, there's uh, there's definitely plenty of damage left on the table, but neither one is finding that single hit that really is gonna make the difference as we reach under a minute left in this game. Amarillo's just yeah. gotta start feeling the pressure, but then again, so does he track. also might He's dead. Hey! Just barely, I think, that down air able to connect and killing him. That's going to be Emeralds taking game one in a really great comeback after being down consistently for just about the entire game. You know, when you're, while Emeralds can be feeling the pressure because, oh man, I'm down and we're under a minute. This like time is now like a factor. Mousefrat can also be feeling that because this is the second time Amaryllis got above uh, above 150 in this game. And he's like, I need to get this kill before I fall into something crazy. He'd been using a lot and, of platforms. It's, and if you saw right tricky. there, if you saw right there, uh, he went for a shield grab, which is kind of, that was like that seems like it was the panic, the panic option, you know? Like if you if you look at this, where he goes for this back air, he manages to shield. The jump happens, and he go. That was a very re late reaction on the shield grab. I'm not even sure exactly what he was going for. I think it was almost more of a hopeful thing than a calculated thing. And he gets punished for it. Fantastic reaction from Amaryllis leads him to be up in this best out of five set by one game at least. As we run it right back to Pokemon State, uh, not Pokemon State, Battlefield. Jeez, not. It is a my New Jersey stadium. is showing. You have a Pokemon I'm sorry. Here and it's a stadium of battle. <laughs> You're right. I take it all back. I'm never wrong. I'm, I'm here. I'll defend you, bro. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Um. Anyway, now this game starting off uh, a lot better for Emeralis. Immediately getting a maybe almost 50% combo onto Mouse Rat. Super solid damage. Um, and if he's able to once again avoid dying like he did in game one then i mean listen if you don't die then you can't lose so now if you're mouse you have to be thinking about how do i fix that particular issue how do i start getting kills and that can be tricky because normally when you're a defensive player you don't necessarily try and because like baiting people to find big openings often requires incurring a little bit of risk that if you're being very safe and defensive you won't necessarily find uh, maybe be more defensive, and then when the timer gets to be a minute left on the clock, you just run up the clock. Yeah, if there's anything that Pikachu can do, it, and could do in Smash, in a variety of games, is that Quick Attack, and on top of being rather short, can run out time super reliably. The problem is you need to get in the same position as Mousefight was in Game 1. Which is not seeming to be the case. Amaryllis is quite ready to counterplay the playstyle that Mouserat has chosen to play. As now we see Mouserat starting to be a little bit less platform focused and look towards the ground. And stay on the ground and it nets him a stock. I'm managing to even things up very quickly though. That very, very easily could have snowballed. But now we have perfectly even wow the turnaround down tilt to catch the the quick attack on the way back beautiful reaction from amaryllis didn't get much off of it but it's tiny things like that that really start to show that he's he is able to react and just respond very effectively 
even in these very high pressure intense situations. So that's gonna be a big advantage for Amaryllis is tiny little gaps, little mistakes that Mouse Rat does are going to get capitalized on. Like right there as he doesn't turn around the down tilt, which could have been a pretty reliable, uh, well, definitely a second hit at the very least. But Mouse Rat, I really like the, just the mental adjustment in his play. Mouse Rat has decided like, hey, I'm not gonna try and go air to air with you. As Amarillo says, no, you're not. I'm gonna make you get into my witch twist. <laughs> <laughs> But now we see a huge... Hey, buddy, can you come over here real quick? <laughs> like, no, 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 you get back here, you son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, a 30% swing, though, in Mouse Rat's favor after Ooh. losing his stock first. It's... Like, things are starting to go Mouse Rat's way as he sticks to the bottom... Uh, the bottom floor battlefield and punishes every single landing that Amaryllis does, regardless of position on stage. That punish could be a, a dash attack or even something as small as a thunder jolt, but hit stun is hit stun, and you can gain space regardless. Amaryllis is at 150%. That's going to clean it off. Master Rat not struggling to find the, uh, the finisher there, just putting him in the corner and doing the necessary dash attack. And now... I love this. Mouse Rat recognizing that last time around. Oh, never mind. I don't love this. But uh, no, I do like that of like standing still. It was, it was more of a standing still trying to psych him out as opposed to standing still trying to get him to approach. But in general, like taking time is fine. You have three minutes on the clock. And if you don't feel comfortable engaging, you don't have to engage. Yeah, you really, really don't. And Mousefrat's making the most of it right now as Amaryllis has thrown, uh, not thrown away, but used a lot of his witch times as a means of looking for uh, counters on Thunder Jolt and lost a lot of situations to hard reads that would kill. But now, which so stale to the point where they it won't affect Pikachu for very long if it connects with him at all. And Mouse Rat has committed to this game plan and is uh, using it to its fullest extent. Forward throw, right? Yeah, but that's not gonna kill. Ooh, Emeril is expecting a very wide quick attack, but Mouse Rat instead opting to just go to the platform. And, oh, that was. Getting off the ledge there is huge for Mouse Rat. You know, we were talking about how Pikachu can kind of struggle to kill, but also that's something that Bayonetta can have trouble dealing with as well. Yes, she does have things like back air. Yes, she does have things like forward air at the let forward throw rather at the ledge. But sometimes finding those opportunities in neutral, especially when you're trying to like somehow play the impossible game of hit Pikachu without getting hit. Yeah, this is Mouse Rat. Definitely figuring out the defensive playstyle a lot better this time around. He has the lead here, just staying further and further back. Tiny little poke moves that he's doing, and then he just waits for it. That um, that even if that downer had been turned around, Mastrat was being far too patient to ever run into that, and he finishes it off with a dash attack of his own. That's going to be one one now as we move into game three. I mean. What else is there to really say? Mouse Rat deliberately not pressing buttons, just taking every hit one one at a time, like not trying to ever commit too hard, try to go air to air with this character, put himself in susceptible pos uh, positions. So I, I'll have shield on standby whenever you come close to me and I can quick attack out of shield if I feel like you're going for a grab. I'll be safe, I'll be, I'll be playing scared, but I won't have I won't have you try to mix me up anymore. And now the ball is back in Amarillo's court. We saw what he could do when uh, Mouse Rat was being like was trying to go punch for punch and cover platforms. What does he do about the oddly oppressive ground game that Mouse Rat displayed in that game too? As I would like to remind everybody that, hey, we're in top eight now. We could, you could make payout for everybody in quarter of this set by typing exclamation buddy point match in the chat. So you should perhaps give that a whirl. Yep. Yep. And there's the promo code only lands.
Yeah. To add 50 for 50 point five dollars to the pot for free. Fifty percent of a dollar. It's incredible. It's it's amazing. It's just out of nowhere. All right. Um wow. do you think Wow Wow I don't know why I sounded like the the, the Owen Wilson wow instead of the anime <laughs> wow. wow. Anyway. Wow. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, Going into this, up. we're having the uh, the the stage switch. Amaryllis choosing to go to um, Kalos. Now, I could okay. What are you What are you thinking? Why do you think Kalos specifically for this matchup? Uh, to be honest, I'm frightened. I'm I'm frightened that he took Pikachu to Kalos because if Mousra had a successful time waiting on Battlefield. Then if Mousetrack can gain a lead similar to that game too, then Kalos will make it all the easier. But the same thing can be theoretically true for Amaryllis. There's a lot of center stage here that he can mess around with. And he gains extra platform mix-ups, at least for recovering, by going to these platforms. So, especially since they're over the ledge. So while he gains a little bit in terms of his own maneuverability and not having to having more options to land of what she was getting stuffed on quite repeatedly in that game too it can also favor pikachu in a lot of ways because keep in mind kalos has walls and teeth uh, and thunder jolts cling to them right down there to snipe i'm surprised he isn't throwing oh. out more okay sure but he does F have smash. the wall he does have the wall cling to help out a little bit in that regard yeah that's true. And i forgot that i had one of those actually yeah, and I, one of those things that actually, you know, the platforms on the side, they can really help if you feel like you're being trapped at the ledge a lot, because just having platforms that are directly above you, just like that. So, although the uh, Thunder Dolts do ride down along the stage itself, uh, Bayonetta can stay outside of the range of those Thunder Dolts, and then what the heck just happened? He just got, he just got pincer movement. Pikachu is far Hold too T short from for one that side. ABK. Oh man! But now we're in. Now we're in that pickle. How does Bayonetta end stocks consistently? I mean, I mean, like she absolutely can mop the floor with bigger characters, and she can land if she can land up tilt consistently. But you're not landing anything consistently on Pikachu. So what? does Amaryllis do in in this moment? Does he try to... Do it? I mean, in game two, his answer was, maybe I can look for some defensive option reads and punish them super hard with some big smash attacks. That didn't work. And now you have more space. Down air not even I, doing it. Yeah. Although I do think that's the right call. I think, did he get a footstool into down air, I believe? Uh, I thought I heard the footstool boot. He um, might have. That it actually would make, would make a lot of sense. It might have been a phantom footstool. But anyway... Regardless, I do think that at this point, yeah, he has to pay attention to what Mouse Rat's defensive options are and try and get what, you know, amounts to a hard read. I think, I, and it feels stupid to say like, oh, how do you kill your opponent? By getting a hard read. But like, sometimes against certain characters, you kind of do have to just, the, the educated way to go about it is to pay attention to the defensive options. Like, right there, that is, like, a bit of a timing thing that Master has been doing. Doesn't do anything for a little bit, and then he goes in for the attack. And Amaryllis has recognized that and started to jump when he's anticipating that approach. Hasn't managed to turn that into a stock quite yet, but that's at least two times where uh, he's just been able to avoid the approach and punish effectively. I mean, it, it took a while, but he did minimize the damage pretty good. 81%, as high as that is is not much that is not something that Bayonetta can't make up rather quickly. I mean, it was 33% for one combo and man, Amaryllis is fiending for these openers as ABK after ABK keeps landing and minimizing the RCO lag with that Witch Shine. While it does have plenty of lag of its own, it's not nearly as much after how many specials Amaryllis used in that sequence. So it's just, Astute awareness has gotten him to 88%. What has it been? Like 15 seconds? 20 seconds? <laughs> and I don't think he's been touched since then. I'm pretty sure that when uh, Pikachu spawned in, he was 81%. Or at least very close to it. 
it just goes to show how important a stock lead is in this matchup and whether it be characters or players both of them are very comfortable playing evasive and playing run uh, playing a runaway Ooh. game but yeah. on even stocks everything can start to fall apart for either uh, for either player yeah it, it feels like amaryllis the way he's been able to get stocks is by being kind of a little bit cheeky just like throwing out these very quirky down airs stuff like that but uh, as i say that the pikachu does have a reliable way to close out stocks at higher percents that being the dash attack and when your opponent has a kill option that's like a burst option in neutral that's definitely sub frame 10 i'm not sure of the exact move that uh, frame that uh pikachu dash attack comes out on but it makes playing against them at higher percent so much scarier yeah, like just having raw kill moves is very, very important. Having just a good ground game is in just ridiculously important. Having and Stash like has a frame six, by the way. That is, oh, yuck. Um, yeah. no, but the thing is, like having a burst option from neutral that kills is kind of what can make a character so, so, so scary, especially at those kill percents. Because if you have a, you know, even if you have a back air that, you know, if you space it well is safe and it can kill if it lands, it's pretty easy for the opponent to play around somebody just like spamming back air in neutral. Um, but when the when when someone like Pikachu has, you messed up a tiny little bit and you're within range of my dash attack, frame six, you're dead now. That's when things become a lot, so much, so much harder to actually deal with. While I've been ranting about Pikachu's dash attack, we have the percentages climbing up there. 95% on Amaryllis dash attack. Not quite a factor yet. But uh, at this point, if uh, Mousetrap managed to land something like a forward smash or an up smash, that could possibly spell Amaryllis an early death. And it's only a matter of time at this point for one of the two. Uh, Amaryllis slowing oh, the God, game. Speak of time, oh my, it's 12 oh seconds God. left. Wow. Oh, I... Oh, I, I... <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, we're about to see a timeout here. I don't think he recognizes it. I don't think he sees it. He should be going in right now. Yeah, there it is. That's absolute. That that's the win con. Yeah, that's always a win con. It wasn't it wasn't even necessarily that he was playing super, 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 you know, campy and patient and defensive, but the stocks just took so long, and by the end of it, I, I we we forgot about it. Honestly, the, the match itself was pretty engaging, so. Yeah, whenever we were on, both players were on even stocks, Amaryllis would really run away with a lot of damage. Amaryllis' advantage state looked so oppressive and so strong. But once we hit, I remember noticing that like, oh, we're less than two minutes. And then suddenly those two minutes flew by and Mouserat was playing to his character's strengths in a lot of ways. It's like, hey, I can play to not get hit. And that's a valuable position that very few characters can reliably do and pikachu is one of those few like quick attack is a hell of a move and when you have enough space like on kalos it yeah it's kind of you, you mentioned like, that the, right away you mentioned at the beginning of that game the fact that kalos had more space and that actually ended up really really impacting the outcome of the match because that timeout wasn't even that inorganic it wasn't necessarily that it felt like the entire time he's playing to, I will never get hit and then I will win with only 20% of a lead. No, it was like they were playing the game naturally. And then after a certain point, Mouse Rat probably looked at the clock, looked at his percent, thought about how much of a pain it would be to try and actually approach and kill Amaryllis and was like, not worth it anymore. I'm just going to play the way, you know, as, as safely as I can and let the clock do the rest of the work for me. And yet, Amaryllis is running it right back. Uh, we might be in for another long haul of a game here, but this time, starting off a lot more, I feel like, w this is the thing, when you get timed out, your initial response is always aggression. Even if it's not necessarily, uh, a well-informed aggression, if you lose because of, you know, you were too hesitant to make moves, then when you queue into that next game psychologically, you're going to want to start making those moves. And honestly, maybe that is what Amaryllis needed because 93% and counting 108 and Pikachu way off stage, perhaps he needed a little bit of a kick in the rear and to remind himself to, you know, I, I, I know how to play the game up close. Let me, let me really 
bash this rat into the ground. Yeah, I mean, a huge lead right at the start here is while aggression may be ill-advised in some ways, just like holding forward because you're frustrated, Bandit does a pretty good job at holding forward. A lot of mobility and a lot of long combos for you to reposition your mentality. And he got that first hit, and now <laughs> here we are. This is the this is kind of the inverse to what we saw in game three. Mouse Wright got that first lead, and it and he felt very comfortable hanging out a lot around and underneath these platforms. Amaryllis gets this first lead, and he's doing the exact same thing. That is a power move. That is a because honestly, <laughs> with 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 that much, with, there's a lot of time on the clock, and to sit there and tilt backwards with Bayonetta's Bayonetta's tilting action, like. The, 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 the message of it is it's not even like a you have to approach me because he approached him soon after. That was like a spiteful thing. Oh, what a different game. And now the taunts are coming out. Oof. Very honestly, most of the time when you see somebody get timed out, even if they had been doing well into the set up until that point, that's usually when they start to fall apart. But that is absolutely the opposite case here with Amaryllis. He has had a fire breathed into him and he is now smoking mouse rat out it's actually while well, we did see him trying like wait around on these platforms and we very well might see him do that again in this set never mind dead? no okay oh. while we might see him do that again amaryllis has taken the idea of hey mouse rat is <laughs> geez <laughs> mouse rat's trying to like camp me out i can do the same thing and I guess Mouse Rat is expecting Amaryllis too because he's leaving a lot of openings for hard, hard punishes that Amaryllis is not sleeping on. Is this, this is looking like a game five set to me as that this time for sure. Ooh, the restock going from getting timed out with I think it was only like a 30% deficit to three stocking Mouse Rat in game four. I would be very surprised if we have another timeout on our hands. I think it, that these two, these two, uh, there's a bit of a, uh, a spark, so to say, between these two right now. There is a, uh, they have locked eyes and we'll see in game five who ends up win this, winning this staring contest, whether Mouse Rat can re-invoke that patient, I'm out play style, <laughs> or whether that's I know that was so hilarious. I, I died. <laughs> oh my lord. Well, as we hit, we're nearing the 40 minute mark of this set, and Numbers is already waiting in the wings. Wait, this set has been 40 minutes? Yes. What? Almost 40 minutes. Almost 40 minutes. It's dang. We have um, passed 38 minutes. The recording is, is 28 minutes. So. Oh, okay. Oh, wait. Yeah, they were right. Because they were waiting for the previous yeah. set never mind yeah 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 i i, I was i i I've, I've commentated 45 minute sets <laughs> this okay. if you had a game if you if you had a game like that there's no way you're gonna have a 45 minute set every set has to be like every game has to be like the most grindiest of timeouts but anyway game five we do have it on smashville uh this is the first time we've seen this stage all set so and they're totally trying to turn him around. Last time, Amarilla started off with a huge combo, and Mouse Rider is like, that looked pretty cool. Hey, turns out you can win by doing a lot of damage. See if I can do <laughs> oh! oh, is he dead? No, he called out the jump with a pretty well-timed thunder, but... And yet, the thunder jolt climbing on the wall taunt takes Amarilla's Taunt him. You've earned jump. this taunt, Mouse Rat. <laughs> now he's here to win in this final game, and Amarillos is kind of falling a step behind in this first, uh, with this first stock gone already. Now here's what the I question. Oh, go ahead. Do you think Masrat is now going to continue with this aggressive? It looks like he is, because if he wanted to, now he had a, he did a zero to death. He could play extremely patiently. He could try and time him out, you know, with only, you know, with with just the two stocks he that uh, he would have left. But no, th these two are now absolutely knocking the heck out of each other. Yeah, I was thinking about the comparison on those two Kalos games of like, wow, Mouse Rat kind of played the, like, I'm not going to get hit and time you out game once I have a lead. And Amaryllis played the, hey, 
I have a lead, you're gonna exploit yourself a whole lot more and like give me a lot more openings, and I'm gonna punish all of them to the fullest extent. It's two similar schools of thought once you have a lead, but vastly different outcomes. Meanwhile, in this game, Mouse Rat is kind of flipping the paradigm a little bit. He said, okay, like, I'm gonna play, I'm gonna choose this smaller stage because I know I can get a lead. I, I've been doing that this entire set. I just need a little bit less space for you to move, and suddenly all of my moves can cover your options, and I can swarm around you. Wow, oh, that's just... And the and the, the elves keep coming as he misses the witch time punish. Oh, and no tech! And that's a two... Oh, are we gonna have the responding three stock? Hey, it could end in one back air. One Pikachu back air, I mean. That's... Yeah. No, they're... they're, they're <laughs> if you're Amaryllis, you, you have to be so, so scared right now. And yes, you managed to take that stock, but you have two more that you need to deal with. Well, he's getting started with these. Finally, like, for the most part, he hadn't been landing a lot of up tilts, but uh, given that... Mouse Rat has now ascribed to a more aggressive play style. Uh, he is managing to find those sorts of moves. That's, of course, the reason why probably Mouse Rat was playing more defensive in the first place, that he wouldn't be getting hit by, you know, those big combo starters from Bayonetta. And it seems like he's recognized that a little bit, gone back to playing a little bit more defensive, or at the very least, not being too eager to just hit buttons. Okay, but don't look now. Mouse Rat has been had, well, had been keeping his his uh, four paws relatively firmly on the ground. It's going back to game the game one uh, counter or the game two counterplay that worked out so well for him. It's like, hey, I'm just not gonna go air to air with Bayonetta because stuff like this can happen. And if, and if that had started in the wrong place, he could we could very well be even stop game, but. I mean, yeah, and even stock universe. game might might still be in the cards here. 137 percent onto Pikachu. Mouse Rat in the corner. Great quick attack in the middle of the stage. That's something that he hasn't really done in a while, and this was looking to punish it, but this time around was not able to anticipate the move. And now here's that back air you mentioned. It's putting him in the corner. Not enough to actually do the damage necessary, though. Oh, that's a, that's a cheeky setup, but delaying the air dodge ever so slightly was Amaryllis. Really solid. He's got to minimize damage. 142 is pretty good, and the dash net finally getting one of those to clip. He had been kind of whiffing on a lot of those dash checks pretty frequently throughout the set, but all it takes is one, and what a better time to find one as you give yourself a fighting chance with two and a half minutes left in this game. Yeah, despite all odds, we actually have a last stock in this game five between these two players. Amaryllis has yet to get that first hit in, but we've seen that once he does, once he gets that single nick of an af of, of like an afterburner kick or anything, he can do some massive damage. Oh, well, that being said, one false move, one misplaced position, and uh, yeah, we've definitely seen that Mouse Rat can take early stocks. And he, I think now he's, he's changed his mind and he's willing to go for him. He, I wouldn't be surprised if he just goes for like a raw forward smash soon. Try to just end it here and now. Yeah, especially if he can manage another ledge, uh, ledge trapping moment. But Amaryllis kind of pushing the pushing the boundaries a little bit, lag. but escapes. Not and that's enough. It. Yeah, tried to get all the way to the other side of the stage, grab the ledge so he wouldn't have to deal with all of that lag. But... No, didn't quite make it, and that meant that he had all the lag in the world. That frame six dash attack, able to reach all the way. And there it is, yep. Honestly, great set between those two. So varied. It, it felt like every single game came from a completely different, completely different, like, matchup between these two. We had a timeout. We had, like, very patient slow. We had you know, bursting down three stocks games. And at that end one, it was like a back and forth pull, ending with both players being pretty scared, but Mouse Rat able to cinch it and uh, securing himself a spot in top six.